Welcome back. So we're hearing a lot about artificial intelligence these days. It was once a topic that was debated amongst academics, but now it's changing the way businesses work and the way that we all interact with the world. IBM Research just issued a recap of their top papers published in 2018. And Dario Gill, the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Quantum and AI at IBM Research, has their top artificial intelligence achievements of 2018 and some predictions for 2019. Hi, Dario. Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure to be here. Ah, thank you very much for joining me. So let's first talk about what artificial intelligence is and, of course, what's new on the horizon. Artificial intelligence, it's a field that seeks to create intelligent machines. And I think it's fair to say that uh, it's been a source of fascination since the field itself was created in the 1950s. And in, in its more general form, we've seen it embody in countless movies and in the popular culture, uh, etc. What The reason that we're talking so much about AI right now is that a narrow form of artificial intelligence has really begun to work. And when I say narrow, I contrast it against a general form of artificial intelligence, the kind of intelligence we humans possess, where we're able to solve problems across many, many areas and domains. We can reason. We have high degrees of autonomy. That's many decades away uh, for the technical field itself. But the narrow field of AI is good enough to perform specific tasks really well. So think about a smart speaker at your home where you're issuing a command. It has to understand you through your speech and be able to deliver an answer or an action. Or think about applying AI to deliver intelligent driver assist, which is a precursor to, in the hopefully not distant future, more self-driving cars. Or applying AI to interpret medical images, say to detect whether a melanoma image is, uh, you know, when we take the, the, the picture, whether it's cancerous or not. These are all examples of narrow tasks that AI has made enough progress that it's beginning to perform them really, really well. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit to demystify how it works. Basically, um, AI uh, uses uh, a biological inspiration, which is the fact that we have learned for over a century that in our brains, we have something called neural networks, that we have neurons and synapses uh, that are the basis of learning and memory. And in the 1950s, scientists created an artificial version, um, an algorithm, that kind of mimicked those neural networks that we have in our brain. So the way it works today is that you feed into, into this neural network examples. So instead of writing down the rules of how the world works, you just give it examples that you're trying the neural network to learn. So let's say you're trying back to the idea of applying it in the medical domain that you have a, a scan, a medical image, and you're trying to detect whether it has uh, a symptom that you're looking for right, in, in the image. So if you give it enough examples of that symptom you're trying to detect in the image, the neural network by itself over time can learn by giving it examples what is the right way to detect it. So the, the core of it is AI is fed by data. So as we have in our world more and more data and more and more examples of things that are happening in the world, we can make AI more and more capable. And that's the reason why it's really beginning to work now, because we have enough computing power, enough data that we can train neural networks to do a good job. Wow. And the good thing, though, is that it takes humans. So let's talk about IBM's research role in some of your achievements in 2018. So the most fascinating achievement that uh, we have exposed to the world in terms of AI this year is it's a project called Project Debater. For the last six years, we have been working on building an AI system that can engage in full live debates with a human. And um, so, for example, we're seeing here uh, uh, an example of a debate we held in Tel Aviv and uh, where we were exploring whether we should subsidize space exploration. So given a motion, a topic that we want to debate, the system has to automatically generate a four-minute opening speech, essentially has to write an essay and deliver in a compelling fashion. The human that is debating against will deliver their opening speech, and the system has to be listening to the opening speech of the human, a full four minutes. 
and from there automatically construct a rebuttal to those four minutes and then a closing argument eventually. Think about the contrast between that and a smart speaker today. At best, it understands a command and it gives us a short answer or an action. Now we're engaging in a full debate. We have to listen for four minutes. We have to generate speech for four minutes. So it's a really, really important advancement and an illustration of AI moving from a more narrow capability to a more broader form, a broad AI. Amazing, and it's mind-blowing to me. So what can we expect to see in artificial intelligence in 2019? Three things to look out for in 19. Because AI is becoming so pervasive and prevalent in our lives, trusted AI, AI that we can trust and have confidence on how it was trained, its security, uh, and, and in the way for us to inspect what it does, is going to take center stage, trusted AI. The second one, is that AI is really good at giving us correlations and predictions? We're going to want AI that gives us more causal explanations. What caused what? And the third area will be the intersection of two fascinating disciplines, the field of quantum computing and the field of AI. We're going to begin to see how quantum may help us over time create new and interesting forms of artificial intelligence. I've been speaking with Dario Gill, the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Quantum and AI at IBM Research, and we've been talking about their top artificial intelligence achievements and predictions for 2019. Dario, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And I'll be right back after this. <laughs>